Greetings, this is Greg for Tesla Tech Insight. As you've seen from my first, uh, the posts that precede this, the big news in the chart cycle today is that um, the e canter from Fuso is now going into production uh, via um, a plant in Portugal that's owned by Mercedes. One of my big discussions over time has been the fact that Mercedes-Benz owns 89% of Fuso. They uh, are 89% of Mitsubishi and Fuso is the truck brand for class six trucks. These trucks are uh, able to carry sort of light duty in the range of two to four t uh, tons of goods along with the weight of the vehicle and battery pack. The announcement that they're in production and they'll be doing deliveries starting the beginning of next year, I thought was big because Tesla has been partnering with 18650 batteries with a number of Mercedes products. And I believe including the Fuso product. However, there haven't been many willingnesses on the part of Tesla or Mercedes to admit where the battery pack and drive train are coming from. I'm fairly confident of this based on the supercharger ability of the batteries for this vehicle. So as you'll see, I've chosen to include the notice uh, with photos of the, the commencing of production of this vehicle. I've also chosen to include an image of the Japanese uh, charging facilities that are fast charge that have been prepared for these trucks. It's interesting to note that allegedly this truck is going to be introduced in New York in the next month. However, it's in Japan that you currently have the largest number of confirmed orders to purchase and lease this in the form of Japanese 7-Eleven as well as a location where the high-speed chargers have been installed. The next issue I wanted to cover on this is the fact that it's kind of interesting to watch because there's a discussion going on relative to Elon Musk of the fact that Elon Musk is really after delivering a semi-product, which is what he's going to discuss at the end of September. The pollution levels that come from the semi are greater than any, every, any other vehicle is part of his objective to get those done. What I found interesting about this is the fact that why should the pollution from the semis be even more important than pollution from the smaller vehicles, especially if the smaller vehicles are easier to do given the amount of battery capacity that's available and the fact that you can use less battery capacity because these vehicles are usually asked to be on shorter runs. Some of the raw specs that were articulated on this were in general about 100 kilometers per day. Most of the routes that these trucks are on are at actually around 50 kilometers. So it might be interesting to see if uh, the vendors like uh, Japanese 7-Eleven might not choose to create dedicated routes for the vehicles and then structure the battery cost and weight to embrace the net distance that's being driven daily on that route, particularly if this is an everyday phenomenon, they actually don't need the max range that that vehicle might be able to do. It was also stated that the number of packs on the vehicle could be increased to get 170 kilometers of range. And again, is that necessary given that the longer the range is, the more likely you end up on a bigger truck? So this is an interesting how are customers choosing to use their range? One other note I wanted to make here is it's really fascinating to watch the contrast between how the truck products are being delivered versus how cars. As you'll recall, in the case of the Model S and the Model X and the Model 3, in all three cases, you are seeing announcements and deliveries at least a year, if not two or three ahead of when those vehicles arrived. In the case of the truck, the totally different process is occurring where you have end user customers taking delivery of those vehicles 
and putting them through tests for as long as a year before it's being announced that those vehicles were electric by the users that have them. And then you're following on, you know, like in the case of the semi, Elon Musk talked about the fact that customers were already testing the, the semi truck iter iteration of a Tesla product when he announced it in May and he didn't show any real photos of the finished product. So I find it interesting how in the case of fleet buyers slash large customers, because there's no need for information to go to consumers who aren't potential buyers, the process of delivery of these vehicles has been changed to reflect a, um, a different rollout process. So I think the whole thing is fascinating to watch. I did want to take time to acknowledge the fact that the Tesla battery being introduced in the form of the Fuso e Canter truck is now in production and can be delivered in scale starting at the beginning of next year to those customers that have begun ordering them. And those customers are also ending up with uh, supercharger ability based on what's being installed in the photo you saw. The one question I think this introduces that I, I'm wondering about is the whole supercharger uh, end user. There's technology that sits inside the supercharger to manage the flow of electricity into the battery. And this can be critical that there be a monitoring process to make sure the battery doesn't overheat and destroy the, the cells that they're trying to charge up. So I'm fascinated to see how the truck rollout occurs and the fact that um, are they possibly including Tesla technology to help manage the flow of electricity or not in these supercharger uh, entities that are being provided. Stay tuned, uh, more news on trucks to come this month. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Please like and subscribe. Look forward to our next conversation. Uh, please share and uh, any comments are always appreciated.